PeachTools.com. G'day, 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 guys. How are we going today? Pete from Peach Tools to here to annoy you again. Hey, did you see my unboxing video on the new plasma cutter here? The uh, seventh generation Best Arc plasma cutter machine. Now, I bought a third generation machine, oh, probably three or four months ago. And now I've just got hold of this baby. From what I can see so far, this machine here is going to eat this machine here. But this machine here was my best machine that I've reviewed so far. So I'll withhold my judgment and we'll put it through its paces and we'll see what this baby can do. Anyway, guys, same as usual. You like my videos, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Come say good day in the comments below. So if you're looking for a good machine, that cost under three hundred dollars. I think this is about two hundred and seventy dollars. Let's see what the baby can do, eh? Right, there, guys. So we're going to assemble this just as she comes out of the box. No tricks to this. Just the standard earth lead that we have here. So we'll plug them in there. What I like about these machines, guys, is they're really, really simple to to set up. Also, before I forget, guys, if we just swing this one around before we get too complicated. You notice here that the uh, water trap and the where your ear goes in, the snap-on connector where your ear goes in, it's all pre-assembled. You don't have to muck around assembling it. So what you do with these machines is you get them straight out of the box, you plug the bloody earth lead into it, the torch into it, and start cutting. I love it, I love it, I love it. You can't get better than that. Well, some of the, some of the other machines, guys, you have to assemble, and it might take you three quarters of an hour or something. But if you don't know how to assemble them, it could take you a lot longer. So it's just a nice little trick this company seems to do with their machines. I like it. So we've got our earth lead here, guys, and we'll take out our AG60P torch, which is uh, about five meter, maybe four meter lead, four or five meters, it's long enough anyway. Some of them only like have a three meter lead, which you can be quite restricted if you're sort of cutting behind things and you want to get in and, and out of things. You have to pull your machine close to what you're cutting. So the longer the lead, the better. I think this is about four meters, guys. Once again, just really simple to install. Just screw it in the bottom there. This here is for your on off switch. Just clips in here. And sometimes when you're cutting with these machines, guys, you get a little bit of vibration. So make sure that everything is tight, especially the uh, pilot arc wire, guys, because sometimes it, it can vibrate in here. And what it'll end up doing is burning out your little socket here. So we don't want to be doing that. So we just take that off there. This one here has got two washers on it put the wire in between the two washers so you've got a a good clamp so like I said before so like it doesn't vibrate just like so and we're out of the box and we're ready to cut yeah right guys if we turn on the third generation machine like so there she goes she's starting up now and I'll plug the air into it plug the air in like so here we go what are we running at guys her running at about 70 psi from what i can see we've got the post time of 0.2 seconds three seconds five seconds six seconds and we've got 50 amps that we can go right down to 30 amp not a bad looking machine right so now let's kick this one here on the guts the seventh generation machine here and we'll see what the difference is eh pete don't think there's going to be no difference <laughs> Right guys, so if we turn the Generation 7 machine on, what do we got? We've got a flash looking LED screen. Oop, and it's telling us a message already that we've got something wrong here guys, see that? But I reckon we can fix that just by playing in the air line. What it's telling us I think is that we have no air. And why I think this is quite important is because if you're not used to plasma cutting, in fact I've done it myself where I've been busy doing something else, so I grabbed the plasma cutter and then I try and cut something and the bloody thing won't cut and it just makes a <laughs> noise. And you think, what the hell's going on here? And um, I have before myself not even plugged the, the air in the back of it. Because you just get so used to using the machine, you think that you automatically do it. But if it actually had something that told me that there was no air in it, that would be a good thing. Because you could tell in 10 seconds flat and you could fix the problem and get on with your cutting. Instead of spending half the day mucking around trying to figure out why you've got no air to your machine. Anyway, that's a different story. So we'll plug it in and see if my theory works. Here we go. All the warning lights have gone out. That's changed to a 50 amp on the amperage. We've got 82 PSI here, which the gauge here is telling us is way too high. So if we pull this out and turn that down, 
the theory is we should go to the three greens and that should tell us that we're at the right pressure for the right amperage, which I think is pretty amazing. Once again, we're cutting out all the guesswork, guys. Now, I haven't used this machine before, but I'd say that's how it works. There you go. 59, 60 PSI, you see that? The top two red marks went out. So we've got green here. So I reckon about 60 PSI, that's where I normally run it at anyway. So if we go up to about 60 PSI, and here we go, 60 PSI. I don't know why it's taking a little while to register because I haven't pulled the trigger on the gun to release the air out of the line. Yeah, so anyway, so we've got 60 PSI, and we've got three greens here. So that's telling us we're all set to cut on that air pressure for 50 amp. <laughs> hey, I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, guys, what else have we got? We've got cut, and then we've got air. So there he is. We check that our air's working. There you go, air, cut. And another good thing for this is, when you're cutting something, or when you before you cut something, you want to blow down your table, you can use it as an air gun. Just blow down your table before you get ready to cut. <laughs> hey, are these things getting more technological or what? <laughs> so another thing we've got guys is 2T and 4T. You might be saying what's 2T and what's 4T? 2T is when you pull the trigger in and you start cutting. As soon as you let go of the trigger, the plasma cutter torch stops. If we go to 4T, what that means is you pull the trigger, you can let the trigger go, it still continues cutting until you pull the trigger again. And then it stops. Understand that? You might say, what's the use of that, Pete? But it is, it's quite useful, and I'll show you in a minute why. All right, next, what we've got here, guys, is this one here, which is PT, which is post time. Now when you push the PT up here, it changes from the PSI to post time. See that? We're five seconds. And if we go seven, we can go all the way up to 15 seconds, or we can go all the way down to three seconds. So that's the post time. Post time is when you pull the trigger and you let it go, you finish cutting. It's how long the air comes out of your torch for before it stops. And the idea of that is that it cools down your consumables and it doesn't burn them out so quick. So if you're doing really thick steel, cutting really thick steel, you want a longer post time to cool your consumables down. If you're only cutting a really thin shit metal, like thin metal, you can have a shorter post time because your consumables are not gonna get that hot. So at the moment, guys, we've got our post time set at three seconds. There you go, and then the air stops. So if we turn that post time up to 15 seconds, watch what happens. See what I mean? It's a lot longer, it's cooling down the consumables. Wow, 15 seconds is a long time when you're waiting for it, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, you get the general gist of the idea, guys. So the thicker we're cutting, the longer the post time, the thinner we're cutting, the shorter the post time. And it does make a big difference if you're only running on a little compressor, you want to try and keep your post time down as low as possible, guys, because it's just going to suck the guts out of the compressor all the time. Right, guys, you may have noticed the fan coming on, as we hear here, fan. Now, that fan only comes on when the machine needs to cool down. When it's running cool enough, it'll run without the fan on. As soon as it needs to cool down a little bit, the fan will come on. And you can also see here that we're running on 220 volt. I mean, that would change to 110 if I was running it on 110 volt, of course. Right, now we come to this here, guys. We've had the post time, now we've got PA. Now you might say to yourself, what the hell does PA stand for? Well, PA, guys, is pilot arc. See, we've got three seconds here. You can actually set how long the pilot arc ignites for before it goes back to the middle that you're cutting, if you know what I mean. Pull the trigger on your pilot arc, you get a flame. And that's the pilot arc initiation of your machine. And when you start cutting, the pilot arc cuts off and it goes from the tip of your plasma cutting nozzle to whatever you're cutting basically. Even if you've got a spacer on like this, it arcs, it jumps between the end of your tip and the middle you're cutting, which you've got your earth on, and which creates the circuit. But the pilot arc, you don't need to create that circuit, in other words. 
You see that? I pulled the trigger, we got pilot arc, and then it just shut off. And it shut off for the simple reason that I didn't make the connection between what I was cutting. And you might say, well, that's pretty well useless, Pete. What's, what, what do you want to do with that? Well, have you ever tried cutting wire mesh or something that's not quite solid steel with a pilot arc plasma cutter? It goes, do, 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 and it won't keep going. And that is what this is for, my friends, the PA. So you can go all the way 15 seconds, all the way down to one second. And I'll show you the difference in a minute. But anyway, let's do some cutting and see what the baby can do. So we've got all our machine all set up here now, guys. I'm going to have it on 2T because I want to be able to control what I'm cutting with the uh, on-off switch. We want it on cut, not air. Got it on cut. We've got it set at 60 PSI at 50 amps. 50 amps there. And we've got it the post time at 3 seconds, which is enough. And we've got the PA at 1 second. Right. So what we're going to do first, guys, is we're going to try and cut a piece of 5mm steel plate like this. And we'll see what happens. As you notice, the fan's not on now. You see that fan light has gone out, guys, because it's cooled itself off. Right, let's see if we can cut this little beastie. Right there, guys, straight out of the box. Will it cut? Yeah! Let's have a look, what do you reckon guys? <laughs> what do you reckon? Looks pretty awesome to feed. Right here guys, that was nothing for this machine obviously. Five mil, nothing. Rightio, here we go. Got 11 millimeter steel, solid steel. Will it cut 11 mil? Only one way to find out. Right, let's have a go guys, let's have a go. Well, what can you say about that, guys? Here we are, guys. Well, you can't really moan at that, can you? 11 millimeters thick. Yo, that's hot. Woohoo! Right, what we'll do now is we'll try that pilot arc function. We'll turn the pilot arc up a bit, and we'll try and cut some expandable steel. See how that goes. Now, I don't know if you guys are anything like me. Have you ever tried cutting this stuff here? Expandable mesh? It's a pain in the bum. But... They reckon this machine makes cutting this stuff a breeze. So let's have a look, eh? Put an earth clamp on there. Put an earth clamp on there, like so. Also, guys, you can see this stuff is as filthy as I don't know what. It's got rust and all sorts of crud on it. So we'll see what happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to change it from 2T, which is where you have control of your on-off switch, to 4T, like so. So that means like I said before, when we pull the trigger, we can let it go and it will continue to cut until we pull the trigger again. And we're going to change the PA, the pilot arc function, from 3 seconds to 15 seconds. So we're going to go up there and we're going to go to 15 seconds. Actually guys, what we'll do first is I'll show you when we don't change it. We'll go back to 1 second and we'll change that to 2T and that at 50 amps and we're at 60 psi 59 psi at 50 amps so this is without those switches set let's see how it cuts you see we're having real issues here see it won't start and then you can get it started you can't keep it going that's because the pilot arc is going off when you stop touching the steel. So let's see if this works. So we're going from 2T to 4T. Go from pilot arc one second to pilot arc 15 seconds at 50 amps. See what happens now. There's a side. Not even touching the trigger. 
the pilot arc is just igniting all the time. See what I mean guys? You can keep the pilot arc running to cut this mesh. I don't know if you've tried to cut it with a normal plasma cutter. It's a pain in the ass. But I like this. I really like it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed making it. I love these new machines. This is really, really impressive actually. A really good machine. Mind you, I didn't have much doubts after I brought the first best arc plasma cutter. Because like I say, that was one of the best ones I'd ever reviewed. This machine certainly does what it says it's supposed to do. I'd have no problem recommending it whatsoever. In fact, this might be my new best favorite machine. And with being able to change how long the pilot arc function actually operates for, that's really awesome if you want to cut rebar or you want to cut expandable steel or something like that. That's pretty awesome. And the 2T and the 4T is awesome as well because sometimes you don't really want to be holding the trigger, especially if you're cutting expandable steel because um, I don't know if you've ever tried it because it's really a pain in the ass. And the LED display I love as well. It's awesome. I mean, for $269, wow. Where's it going to stop, guys? Where's it going to stop? Anyway, guys, if you want to see me doing something a little bit different, I've started a new YouTube channel as well. It's just showing you fellas where I live and all sorts of exciting things you can do in Christchurch, New Zealand. I'll put a link below in the description if you want to check my new channel out and have a say good day there as well. And also remember, guys, you can buy this machine here through a link in the description. I'll, I'll drop a link down there as well. Same as usual, guys. You like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. If you want to see a video about a really, really crappy plasma cutter, Check up this side, I'll put a link up here for you. And if you want to see a video about how much air you need to run your plasma cutter, check up this side, guys, and I'll put a uh, link up there for you. Right, you know what Pete's going to do now? Cheers, guys. Bye. Pete's Tools.com.